So hey guys, what's going on? I'm your host Colin Zhu and welcome to a bonus episode of Thrive Bites. I'm here with my lovely, lovely friend, Dr. Connie Nguyen. Um, we go way, way back. We do. Uh, we go way, way back. Um, actually, I usually address her by uh, her nickname CJ. You know, that's how we knew each other growing up. Um, so thank you so much for being here. How are you doing? Great. Thank you for having me. And, uh, <laughs> we're going to introduce ourselves and just kind of give you a little bit of insight of, you know, how we know each other. Um, so why don't you address to the audience, you know, who you are um, and uh, we'll get into it. So uh, my name is Dr. Connie Nguyen. I uh, have a practice in Freehold. Uh, I'm a general dentist that focuses on mainly cosmetic and implantology. Awesome. And uh, for those, you know, I'm, you know, obviously Colin Zhu, you know, your host. Um, and how, you know, let's get into it. I mean, how far back do we, you know, know each other? I think we go pretty far back. You may be one of my oldest friends. You mm -hmm. know, um, we've been friends since uh, high school, freshman year. It just so happens we were just in, I guess, every class in high school and through college. And, uh, I think that's why we all beca we became such good friends is because I couldn't get rid of you. <laughs> <laughs> can't, can't, can't get rid of me. Can't get rid of me. And, you know, there's a lot to say about that because, you know, you and I, you know, we met um, offline um, as well. And we just kind of, you know, reunited with a couple of our other, you know, friends as well. Another childhood friend that goes as far back, um, I think it's the sixth grade, you know, yeah, um, to yeah. really give people a timeline. And when you know someone for that long, um, it really, um, uh, it, it speaks to the kind of relationship, yes, you know, that yes, yeah. people can have. And when you compare and contrast that to relationships that we have virtually, you know, versus like acquaintances, family, friends, um, things like that, and family members, it, it could speak to how deep you know, a relationship can go. And, um, you know, on this podcast, we talk a lot about relationships. Um, and this is very, very unique for me, you know, to have you on, but also to have, you know, our friendship just kind of blossom over the years. And, you know, we've, you know, had a lot of, a lot of, you know, good times and, you know, also uh, interesting times as well. So. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, and I think the older we get, I think we realize like our oldest friends are, uh, I think the most valuable um, at that re reunion we had was probably one of the mo my most memorable nights in, in a long time because there is like a certain comfort when you meet a friend that you've been friends with for so long that you can you can be yourself and like, they've known you when you were making you know when you were awkward when you were um, at uh, when you're still figuring yourself out because that's what high school was right and so now even like the friendships that we we are making from day to day it's it's a lot harder to kind of like develop that kind of like deeper relationship where you can just you know throw down the politeness and just tell each other like it is right. and um and it's very valuable because life is you know no one's guaranteed tomorrow right and so uh it's it's nice to just have good friends around still mm -hmm. one of my favorite things about our relationship that i love was the fact that you know throughout that time um you know, we would go months without talking, but our friendship was so strong to the point where, you know, we could just pick up where we left off. That's right. That's right. And I just, I just would, would be like, Colin, oh, what country are you in now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and no, I, I mean, that, that is a common thing that I get, you know, um, you know, not to, you know, uh, whatever, but I, I'm, I, professionally, I would travel all over the place. Right. And then personally, I love to travel. So it's a common question that most people would ask me. So, and come and, and the question I would always ask you is like, you know, what are you doing? What kind of trouble you're getting yourself into? You know, where are you at with your kids? You know, your husband, things like that. And, you know, we sought, um, you know, very different lives, you know, and that's what's made us, you know, happy and content, you know, and that contributed to us being, you know, really good friends and, you know, to this day. So again, you know, I appreciate you spending the time and, um, you know, just to chat and reminisce. So. Yeah, I, it's, it's always nice to catch up sure. <laughs> on camera in front of every 
millions of viewers. I know, seriously. <laughs> you know, I think a lot of times people put a lot of effort into their romantic relationships. Um, what they don't realize is that your friendships are just as important and they need just as much cultivating and nurturing to kind of, you know, grow and build to become like a, like a, a long time uh, relationship. Have you ever read the book, uh, The Five Love Languages by I Gary have. Chapman? Yeah. I think, I, I, I thought it was a very interesting book. Obviously, you know, popularly it's, it's geared towards, you know, romantic relationships, but I think it also applies for family and platonic relationships as well. So what are you, your, what are your top two love languages? I, I, I think I only have, I think I took the test and it was, I was just uh, quality time across the board. Quality time? Yeah. 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 So is mine. Um, quality time is my number one, and I would say a very, very close second would be physical touch. So, yeah. so I love, you know, in a platonic sense, is you know, hugging and kissing and things like that. Um, obviously, we're in a pandemic, so we can't, right. you know, go about doing that. So, um, and just for you know, you know, we've all been screened and tested and stuff before we came on this interview. Um, so. Yeah, so I just really appreciate that. So, um, yeah, so I wanted to share with your audience, I, I guess, one of uh, you know, a story so they kind of know who you were. So Colin was our, uh, I don't want to use the word dorky. We were all dorky. But <laughs> <laughs> we were all just trying to be doctors in high school. But um, you especially, you were, you were always a hard worker, and we would just always mess with you, and we would be like, Colin, <laughs> did you hear about that pop quiz? And we would just like watch you freak out. Wait, what kind of pop quiz? It was, it was like a Spanish pop quiz, I think. Yeah, we're in the same Spanish class That's right. together. All right, and uh, just have you just go panic and leave lunch and go study, and it was, <laughs> and we did it so many times, and you never caught on. <laughs> <laughs> No, sometimes I would be like that serious and you, I'm just like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> and in a lot of respects, I'm still like that. Um, still carrying, you know, that, you know, day forward um, or that, you know, behavior, you know, forward. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's nice. We were talking a lot about friendship and how, you know, you need that support system to kind of, you know, let yourself, you know, relax and, and all that. My memory of you, um, one of my favorite memories of you, um, you know, we were talking about this with our friend, uh, friend Chayden, uh, who's, you know, another friend that kind of we grew up with as well. We did a lot of pickup basketball games, you know. So for, you know, I'm going to I'm going to say this. So CJ, you know, my so I knew her as CJ. That's her nickname growing up. And uh, she, CJ never was physical. Like, like she, you hated, was it because you dreaded or you hated exercising? But she was never physical to any sense of the degree. But we played a lot of pickup basketball games um, in your uh, development area where your parents are. You know what, it's, it's not that I wasn't physical. I think I found exercise to be repetitive and mundane. But sports was always something that, I still play, I still play like recreational volleyball now, but it's, and that's real exercise to me. Like running on a treadmill, I mean, I, I can't get into it. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. you're right about that. <laughs> but yeah, those basketball games on the streets were yeah. a ton of fun. And the re reason why I bring that up is because like it was, you know, our lives were so simple, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, you have kids now. They're two beautiful, you know, girl and a boy. And, uh, you know, and most of the kids that grow up in our age in our virtual social media age right now it's like you know their lives are a little bit more complex you know um and our lives were a lot simpler you yeah. know um, i was mentioning the other night when we got together was how i just had to memorize people's landline numbers you know do you remember memorizing oh, you know yes yes i remember even calling uh 1-800 collect from a payphone, but mm -hmm. you would do it so it's like call me back at this number da, 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 you know <laughs> <laughs> because we didn't have quarters or whatever at the time. Yeah, exactly. Do you remember your parents' uh, landline? Do I they do. even still have a landline? We still have a landline, but I still remember my old house uh, when we moved from, um, or my uncle's house. I still remember that landline. But yeah, things have changed, I think, uh, for children growing up. It's, it's different because... Um, now that as a mother, I, I want my kids to have like that, that same kind of memory where they're making amazing friends and they're playing in the streets and coming home when I call them for dinner. But it, it doesn't seem like that anymore. It yeah. seems more organized sports, which, uh, you know, I'm figuring it out as I go. This is just modern day parenting and what it entails. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. Hopefully they'll make, you know, they'll make great friendships like we did. And um, 
And we talked about how important that is. So hopefully that's something my kids will grow up with as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, so one of yeah. the things I, one of the main reasons why we're here is um, I love, love, love the fact that, so this is a show, you know, Thrive Bites for those who don't know, um, is, you know, we talk about plant-based living. We talk about, you know, developing our emotional wellness and building up emotional resilience. And we talk a lot about thriving, right? So what I love about having you on is I really want to kind of talk about, you know, your story on how you got into plant-based, you know, the lifestyle, the approach, and it just happened, it, it kind of happened happenstance, right? So, how excited were you when I called you and I said... <laughs> give, give the audience members, um, you know, an idea of you know, how you got into it, you know, what was the step-by-step -step into it? Um, so let's start with the, the story first. Okay. So you know that I've always been uh, a big supporter of every endeavor that you, you know, um, expand to, uh, you know, your book, and then you had a podcast, uh, what is he coming out with next? But I support each and every one. So I started listening to your podcast. You're like a proud parent. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yes, Colin. <laughs> no, stop messing up here. <laughs> So um, I started listening to your podcast, and uh, I think you, it was one episode where you had on uh, the plant trainers, so I guess I got to give them a shout out. Um, and they were talking about, it, the episode was relatable because I think the, uh, the gentleman was talking about how he was doing it for his kids, you know, and, and as a parent, you kind of relate to other parents that, you know, you want to be around for your kids because, uh, you know, your kids need you to you know, live as long as possible. Um, and so I was, I think they were talking about how, you know, he had gone to the doctor, he had a couple of ailments, um, and he went completely plant-based. And when he returned back to the doctor, all the numbers were reversed, you know? And, and at first I was kind of like, all right, this sounds anecdotal. And I mean, we're coming from like a, a science background, right? Everything has to be research-based, you know, um, and it can't be just from like one uh, personal, hand, personal account uh, of what happened. And so I was like, okay, this, that sounds intriguing. And, uh, you know, for the longest time, uh, you know, I've, I've had vegetarian friends and most of them did it for animal rights, which I respect. Um, I never, you know, I never thought that they were actually, I never believed that it, it had health benefits, let's mm -hmm. put it that way. I don't think that the health benefits, uh, is even still commonly believed right now being the health benefits of being plant-based which is really great that you're really trying to get the word out there mm -hmm. i read some crazy statistic that like i think uh it was like only a few years ago one percent of the population was like vegan um and now it's at maybe like you know six percent which is still a very very small percentage um so anyway i i looked up uh what the health benefits are uh to being plant-based and I was shocked. What did you, what did you find? It was, it was like, you know, cut your risk of a heart disease in half, cut your rans cancer risk in half. You know, these are like longitudinal studies mm -hmm. and that's profound. Mm -hmm. You know, this was not something that was, um, talked about. You know, we, we were taught from when I remember going, to, you know, from physiology, health and physiology class in, in, at, in college. And they were saying that, you know, yeah, you're going to be, you're going to be lacking in protein here and nutrients here. You know, so I, I kind of wrote it off. Right. Um, and then when I spoke to you, you told me to watch The Game Changers on Netflix. And that was really what did it for me because I was like, it really broke it down. Um, even then, I was still a little skeptical because you can't, you, you can't believe everything you read, everything you see, right? right? So I was like, let me just try this. What, what do I have to lose, you know? Yeah, even before I even recommended that because you had took the initiative of doing it on your own. So after you, you called me up and, you know, uh, we were just actually, you didn't call me up specifically. You, we just had one of those catch up phone calls of, you know, just us catching up as friends. And then you just told me that, hey, I listened to one of your past episodes um, with this couple and um, I started, you know, getting into it, right? And then, uh, and then you said something that really stuck with me. What, what did you say by like the second day, you know, you switched up everything and- It was um, profound, I guess, mm. uh, for lack of a better word. Uh, I felt the results almost instantaneously. So. I'm, I'm a working mom, so it, it's, it's known that when you're a working mom, you're tired, you're chronically tired. And so I just accepted it that, you know, this is how it is. You know, I work 
and then I come home to my real job, which is you know, <laughs> sleepless nights. And you know, I have two kids, um, age four and two, so they, they need a lot of attention. They're not sleeping through the night. Um, my younger my younger one isn't. And so I you know I was in a complete utter state of just chronic fatigue, and I just accepted it as normal because you see the and you love being a mother, not yeah, not to say that you just push through. Um, but I will tell you, it was within days of me starting just to cut out like um, meat. Uh, I was like, oh, I, I don't actually need to nap when they nap because, you know, that's what I would do just to kind of catch a break when they were sleeping. I would just take a little uh, nap myself. Um, it was very inefficient because I felt like that during that time I could be, you know, doing a load of laundry, cleaning up the house, uh, making phone calls, running errands. Um, but I, I just needed that break because I was so exhausted. So you would take a nap for like how long? Oh, like two hours in a day. Like it was a requirement. Two hours? Yeah, oh, okay. Like it was required. Like I, so you would nap as long as they would nap? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And so as soon as I started doing it, it was like I had like this burst of energy. Um, and I didn't, I, I felt like the naps were not as required, I mm -hmm. guess. And uh, I would come home from work at seven o'clock at night. You know, this is usually when sometimes you, you push your kids to bed because you just need to sit down. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's sometimes there's like a little certain mom guilt that comes with that because you feel like you, you, they haven't seen you all day. They want to play with you. And all you want to do is just kind of like get them to bed so you can just rest for a little bit. But then I'm t it was unbelievable. I would come home and I'd be like, hey, you know, let's, let's, let's do a quick craft together before bath time. Yeah. And that alone is enough of a reason to, to do this, you know? And so I've been, I've been uh, pretty much on this, you know, everyone around me was like, all right, let's see how, how long you keep this up for. Cause it is, it's not easy. So before that, you know, you know, besides taking naps, you know, other people would, you know, drink like energy drinks, yeah, low, right. many cups of coffee. Oh, like, yeah. did you have any other type of stimulants, you know, yeah. to kind of get you through the day? So um, my coffee, coffee was definitely, um, I don't really like to drink coffee because I'm prone to getting like heart palpitations from coffee. Mm -hmm. But then when you're so tired and you need to function at work, you, you do it, you give in, and then you deal with the heart palpitations later. So mm -hmm. this is like... This so you're a little bit more sensitive with it. Yeah, yeah. And so with this, it was, uh, it was a life changer, mm -hmm. right? And um, I guess I, what I want your, your listeners to know is that at the very least, like do it for your family, you mm -hmm. know, do it so you are like in a better mood when you're around them. Do it so that you have more energy to play with your kids, you know. Um, so that that's that's the main reason. Uh, yeah. And that's how it started. It's been a while now. Uh, and I think everyone around me was like, how long are you keep up this? this, up, this up, <laughs> you know? how, how, how long is the, the, the charade going yeah. on? Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> And I haven't stopped. I haven't stopped because you're, you're almost kind of like, uh, you almost get addicted to it because as soon as I make that cucumber, tomato, avocado salad, I know I'm going to have a burst of energy right after <laughs> that. That sounds crazy, right? Uh -huh. uh, um, but yeah, so I, I've, I've kept up with it. And uh, I also wanted to tell, how, to tell how, you. How many, how many days has it been? It was, uh, I want to say I started beginning of August. Beginning of August yeah. and we're currently recording couple of days before Thanksgiving. Yeah. So that's, uh, so that's one, two, three, almost four months. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, um, when I, when I got the call, you know, I thought it was just going to be a 30 day experience, right, you know right. what I'm saying? Um, so just as a reminder for those of you guys who are tuning in, you know, um, what we're talking about is a whole foods plant-based, you know, approach. And we were actually talking about this off camera, um, that, you know, what are the differences between a whole foods plant-based approach versus, you know, vegan and being vegetarian. And, you know, I broke it down for her, you know, in, in a way where... Right, because I'm still foods, very new at this. Yeah, so yeah. I'm still like a very novice at exactly. this. So I simplify it, you know, how I would speak to, you know, a patient of mine or, you know, a very close friend where, you know, it's really, you know, eating as close to mother nature as possible. Yeah. Um, you know, if it's not grown out of a vine, off of a tree, or you know out of the ground you know your best bet is to kind of minimize it and it's a plant predominant approach where you're filled with you know vegetables fruits whole grains beans lagoons nuts seeds and you're minimizing if not avoiding uh, refined process um, foods um, and also you know uh, heavy heavy in fats as well 
Um, so, and that's comparatively different than vegan because, you know, you know, you're not entirely devoid of you know, animals, which is what vegan is. And, you know, being a little bit more extreme than that, you know, you're also not wearing animal products, you know, as well. Um, and then vegetarianism is, you know, you can be, you know, eating a lot of, you know, uh, plants, but also incorporating eggs, like oval, you know, vegetarianism or pescatarian, where you're just incorporating fish and things like that. So there are differences, you know, and so you decided to go, you know, as plant-based as possible. So, you know, because, you know, what my question is, because we're both Asian, right? What was, you know, growing up Asian, like, you know, in terms of the food, like, did you, you know, for me growing up, it was very balanced. So it wasn't like very American where it's very heavy in meat and very heavy in starch and carbs and things like that. You know, the Chinese, you know, were very balanced and having equal portions of vegetables, fish, meats, you know, things like that. So I grew up, you know, more balanced. What was it growing up? I mean, I think we, we ate traditional Vietnamese food. Uh, and, and I think the the biggest um, uh, ailment, uh, or the biggest killer, I, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, disease, condition, illness. I think uh, I grew up eating, you know, your traditional white rice. Um, pho is, you know, rice noodles for the most part. And it, it is, still to today, I cannot get my father to eat brown rice. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, you can't change, you know, teach an old dog new tricks, right? Uh, but they don't realize that it's the, the white bread, the white rice, it, it's, it spikes your blood sugar. So diabetes is a huge issue uh, in the Asian community. But I will tell you, it's, uh, the, that's probably one of the, the hardest challenges by going plant-based. Is, is, is the people around you to kind of come on board? No, it's not being able to eat traditional Vietnamese food. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think more of the, the challenge in general is finding um, alternatives to it. Right. Still get the same flavor, but okay. doing it in an alternative way. I mean, you can be, you know, creative in that s sort of sense. And my father's the same way. I mean, so how we transition as a family over the years, because, you know, don't, you know, don't, don't think like I, you know, I was healthy for most of my life. I mean, you know, I actually, you know, I grew up in the States, right? Um, you know, you, you were born in Vietnam and you emigrated around Age six. Around six, right? And so, you know, I grew up eating all the fast food chains, Pizza Hut, McDonald's, and, you know, things like that. And then as a family, we actually became healthier around, I would probably say when I start, started going into medical school and I started learning right. um, all the stuff and, ha and, and the policy and the lack. And I say this a lot on the podcast where, you know, you don't, you're, you don't get trained enough you don't get educated enough and you know we'll speak about you know what your experience was like you know in dental school whether you got that or not um and you know that's when i started to learn and that's how our family shifted yeah. you know what i'm saying so um like i used to drink three glasses of milk a day you know and i stopped in like oh nine you know um and then you know, because our meals were just very balanced you know it was easier for me to shift you know so i wanted to bring up this one picture that you posted um so back to what you were saying is that you only change your diet as soon as you got educated about the things we were putting into our bodies mm -hmm. um and you posted something that was really profound um i should probably just stick it in my fridge but it said i'm gonna get this quote wrong but um the food industry mm -hmm. treats us without any regard for our health mm -hmm. and then the health industry treats us without any regard for the food, food that we eat mm -hmm. i mean it, it's so true, and, and if you want, you can explain to the viewers um, what that actually means. But the way I took it is the food industry wants to make that meat more tender, more fat, mm -hmm. you know, more tasty, because then there's, it, it results in profit, mm -hmm. right? So they're pumping it with hormones and steroids and things that aren't natural, obviously. Um, and then we get sick. Mm -hmm. And then you have these pharmaceutical companies who are... Uh, who create the, the right. therapeutics right. to combat it. That's right. That's right. And we'll, we'll get to that and how it relates to dentistry uh, in a little bit. Um, but that's, that's, it's like this like vicious cycle that we're in. And we don't even realize that we're a prisoner in it, right? Like if we drive down the street, we're hungry. It, it's impossible. <laughs> impossible to find food to table um, 
a, a dish, or a right. food to table dish, right? And so you're gonna find Wendy's, you're gonna find McDonald's because- You mean farm the table? Do you mean farm the table? I'm sorry, farm the table. Yeah. Can you edit that? <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but you mean farm the table, farm meaning the, like, you know, from like the from the ground and, you know, present minimal, it to your table. Yes. Minimal, to table. yes, minimal intervention to your table. Leaving out a lot of the middleman. You, you'll find Wendy's, you'll find uh, McDonald's. You'll find things that are made to taste good and done quickly. It's the convenience factor. It's the convenience factor. And if you have convenience, people will come, you yeah. know? And uh, it's almost like we're set up to fail. Yes, mm. yes. And when you have that incentive, unfortunately, it, it hurts all of us eventually, right? As a, as a, as a population. Right. So um, now that you're aware, I'm, I'm glad that we are trying to spread the message that it's, it's, it's a real thing, you know? It's a, it's a real um, epidemic that we are just, trapped in this this uh, situation that we it's much harder to crawl out of you know that post is you know actually a repost from like a food tank in or organization and they just put it very eloquently they're, you know I would love to say they're my words but they're not but the point is is like our top two killers of our nation is like heart disease and cancer and if you you know a lot of you know these conditions are lifestyle related and up to 80 percent of it is preventable you know one of them being which is what we put into our mouths, you know? So there's a lot of things like, you know, I could walk down the street and get hit by a car, right? So those are things out of our control, but there's a lot of things in our control, you know? Um, you know, what we put in our mouths, you know, what we smoke, what we, you know, whether how much we move or not, you know? So if we have the power to control that on our own, um, you know, let's focus on that, you know? So, um, so I really love the fact that you know, you took on this, you know, on your own, you took it on as an initiative on your own and you haven't really looked back. No, right? no, so. there's no going back now. So now that you're, you know, you're going into this, you know, uh, four months, you know, did, did you, do we ever talk about whether you kept a journal um, or not? Or it's more of just keeping how you felt like day to day? Colin, I don't even have time to think, let alone take a <laughs> journal with my kids. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> uh, no, I, I don't journal, but I will tell you that um, I was never a good cook. I never really enjoyed it. Um, I just felt like it took a lot of time away. You know, I, I was very limited on time, so I never, I never enjoyed it. I, I cooked to survive. You know, I cooked when I was hungry, mm -hmm. but I never enjoyed the. Pro and you loved cooking, and um, but becoming plant based, you almost you're forced to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been cooking more, and the wonderful thing is. This is not, it's not like a easy journey. Um, it's a great journey, but it's not easy because it does have some challenges as far as like finding, um, finding those alternatives to those meals that you really like. You know, like I, I'm, I'm eating things that I never even knew existed. Hearts of palm, have you ever had hearts of palm? Mm -hmm. Tastes just like fish. <laughs> <laughs> like, makes the best fish taco uh, alternatives. Um, but I'm enjoying cooking more because I know that once, uh, once I make this meal, I'm going to feel so good after. So you're, you're cooking, but you feel good after. It's like that motivation um, to do it more, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas before, if you cook a steak, you know, all okay, right, well, I, I ate, I'm not hungry anymore, but now I'm like, I just want to take a nap. Yeah, right. exactly. So um, my husband likes it, the kids like it, and uh, we're, we're, we're doing really well with it. That's good, that's good. So I'm curious, uh, what did your husband bill is not you know he's not plant-based he wasn't vegan or vegetarian before that he ate like everything what was his what was his reaction um like how far along were you doing this before he picked it up or did you tell him like from the get-go um yes and what was his reaction after yes. that he's more like um yeah meat and potatoes kind of guy right. you know but I made him watch the uh, the game changers, and he was like, "Okay, you know, this makes sense." You know, he's he's also a health professional, so he he gets it. But he knows that it's not easy, you know. But he eats what I cook, and uh, and he enjoys it. He can't tell, so I guess. <laughs> uh, was he surprised like when you were in the kitchen more often? Oh, he's just like, I feel like I got a new wife. <laughs> I mean, it's. <laughs> so so he, yeah, so he, I'm not hearing any complaints on his end because. If you do it right, um, there's some great recipes uh, out there. If you do it right, you can't tell that you're 
you know, I think everybody thinks you, we just eat salads all day. Right, exactly. Um, and food is bland, but um, there are some alternatives out there that really taste like, um, can taste like meat. I'm not, I'm not talking about the Impossible Burger or anything like that. I'm talking about plant-based foods that, you know, can really substitute and make food taste good and make you feel good. And that's really all we want. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, exactly. Um, I know, I mean, everyone's in, uh, individual experience is going to be different, right? So for me, um, when I transitioned, I transitioned a little bit after my marathon in, um, uh, how many years has it been? What year are we in? 20, 26 years, 2014. And what I found was, you know, I've learned the research, I read up on the science and studies and things like that. But what was more in my own experience was like when I was training, you know, I became, it, it, it was harder, you know, I, you know, with meat, with dairy, you know, I became more bloated, more, uh, you know, just, just swollen in a sense. And training and recovery was a lot harder for me. So when I switched, I noticed for me, you know, it was a little bit more s subtle. Um, for you, it was a little bit more dramatic um, of a change. Um, but, you know, my recovery started getting better, you know. Um, but I, I, I reason why I bring up the family members is because, you know, especially when I talk to my patients, in order for an individual person to be successful, you know, depending on what their health goals are, it's their social circles that influence that, right? So let's just say you have someone that wants to quit smoking or you're, you know, counseling someone to stop a certain, you know, habit of theirs so their, their teeth are not breaking down. When they go back to their family members or social circles, it's a lot harder if they kept, keep negatively reinforcing that. So that's the reason why I bring, you know, them, them up. What about the rest of your, you know, family members and friends? Like, I don't know if like, like what happens when you go out? You know, before COVID. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, that's the thing. I haven't had too many challenges because I haven't gone out. And so cooking at home is a lot more feasible because we're just home all the time. Right. So I that's right. You did start, you know, yeah. during COVID. That's right. So I haven't met those challenges yet. But hopefully by then, um, uh, because this is like a journey, I think I'm only going to get more efficient with it. Um, right now, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still figuring it out. Um, but hopefully I'll know more uh, when I do go out I'll be more prepared as to what to order or you know maybe just be more aware of the restaurants that actually are plant-based uh, things like that it's like joining like a this underground club that, sh that shouldn't be underground really no no and actually to bring back the the point about the research and stuff um you know we we've actually you know the first first literature that actually proved um, you know, without a shadow of a doubt that it can actually reverse heart disease. It's the only diet shown oh, to reverse heart disease. That was back in 1990, I you know what I'm it. saying? And it's just funny how it's not headline news, you know, like COVID right now, like what? We're close to what, 250 deaths right now? Like this is the recording right now is in near uh, before Thanksgiving, you know, and that's, you know, since like March heart disease, we kill upwards to 700,000 a year from heart disease alone, every single year, right? But the reason why I think about heart disease and I think about COVID is because COVID is a very rapid, contagious, you know, spreader. And, you know, when you get sick, you get sick pretty quickly. Whereas heart disease, cancer, it's slow. You know, you need to build up years for those arteries to clog, for that inflammation and those cancerous cells to like, you know, break down your system before you actually get sick and eventually pass away, yeah. right? So it's not of a immediate effect when people, you know, eat, you know, if they want to, you know, eat something better or, you know, um, you know, move better, you know, there's no immediate effects so or there's no immediate gratification. So it's a lot harder for people to kind of, you know, take on. So, yeah. I mean, I believe, I will wholeheartedly believe all those things because, um, I read, I read the research and I also think, uh, that the, the plant-based diet is probably doing more for our health than can be measured. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's not just right now it's, it's heart disease, it's cancer. That's what's everyone on everyone's mind. Um, but you know, as far as boosting energy, boosting our good mood, um, I read something cause uh, my, my mother suffers from, um, high cholesterol. And, uh, I just read recently that high cholesterol is linked to dementia mm -hmm. and by lowering your cholesterol, you're cutting your risk of dementia. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's just indirect relationships everywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think the research will start coming out and hopefully this will become a 
not just a trend, but something that's that's you know that's going to change uh, the whole food industry. Yeah. yeah, and I think it is. I mean, you know, we've had a very roller coaster ride of uh, you know an election season, but the re reason why I use that analogy is because we can vote you know, by our forks, you know, or for us as chopsticks. <laughs> but my point is, is, you know, when you don't want something, you know, you just don't buy it, right? And that actually is a vote. That's a signal for lower, you know, demand. It's basic, you know, economics, you know, it's like when you don't, when there's less demand of something, you know, those people are going to be like, you know what, we're going to have to shift or else we're going to go out of business. So, so let's, Let's shift gears a little bit and talk about, you know, dentistry in general, mm -hmm. right? Um, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but every dentist goes through the general dentistry uh, schooling and training and then they specialize, kind of like how we go through primary care and, you know, learning about the whole body before we specialize, right? So give us a snapshot on, you know, just what, what entails general dentistry and what are basic one-on-ones we need to know about it. Okay, perfect. Um, uh, the number one question I get asked is, you know, why do I get so many cavities? Um, or uh, most patients will come in and say like, you know, I've always had soft teeth, I've always gotten cavities. Usually when I do a little investigating, uh, I usually find out um, the cause. And I tell most of my patients, like, if I'm good, I can fix every cavity that you have in your mouth. But if I'm great, I can tell you how to prevent them. Mm. And that's, that, that's ideally the kind of dentist you want, right? Um, and there's a, there's a couple things. Cavities are caused, here's a little lesson. Cavities are caused by uh, a particular strain of bacteria, the main one being Streptococcus mutans. And it feeds on sugars, starches, um, and it thrives in an acidic environment. Mm -hmm. So you're eating a lot of carbs, you know, you're, uh, it's multifactorial. So if you're eating a, a lot of sugars, a lot of um, carbs, a lot of starches, it, you're going to cause that bacteria to thrive. So it's uh, the analogy I use is a lollipop that you drop on the ground, all the ants are going to come to that lollipop. Mm -hmm. Okay, it just mm -hmm. flocks to it. And uh, it goes through, a, it processes, it eats what we eat, which is what I tell my pediatric kids. Um, and it produces uh, the byproduct, lactic acid. Mm -hmm. And that's what breaks down your enamel. It's just this natural decaying. It's the byproduct. Yes. So your enamel is quite hard. It's twice as hard as your bone, believe it or not. And what is the enamel? It's the front part of the teeth? Yes, or? the enamel is the strongest part of your teeth. Mm -hmm. Right. So the, the, uh, the tooth itself has layers. The outside layer is the enamel. That's the hardest part. Mm -hmm. um, when I say it's twice as strong as bone, it is. You know, it's much harder to break. It's harder to break your teeth than it is to break your bones, but we break them because they go through quite a beating, you know, throughout life, right? We're constantly chewing on them, eating on them. And well, so it's also because, you know, our mouths are, you know, if for, you know, besides our skin, it has the most exposure to the outside world, right? Because you're eating, it has to come through the mouth, go through the teeth because we have to chew or masticate, right? And it's literally being exposed to like everything. Yes, yes. So it, it like I said, it takes quite the beating. So there are things that you can do to kind of keep your teeth strong and healthy. Um, and what we were saying, what I was saying before about the food industry making things, uh, uh, the food industry basically producing things that have no regard to our health, right? Mm -hmm. So natural sugar is not that easy to find in the environment but we were able to actually synthesize sugar so what do they do they put a ton of it in our juice boxes they put it in, in everything because the sweeter it is the more likely you're going to buy it mm -hmm. and we know that we talked about this where it contributes to diabetes um, and other chronic uh, illnesses but with teeth especially it rots our teeth because mm -hmm. now you're, you're drowning your teeth in, in sugar um, and that's essentially what a cavity is, yes, right? And, yes. why, and why, like, it's essentially what a cavity is. And you know, my, my, my other question was, why is it bad? Is because it'll rot, and then what happens if so you don't as, take care of it? So as the cavity spreads, um, it makes its way into the nerve, which is mm -hmm. right at the center. I call it the core of the apple. It makes it to, into the center, and that nerve is connected to your brain, your heart. Um, there was, it's not common, so I don't want anyone to, to panic, but you know, there was. Um, there was a particular patient who had like an abscess in his brain and when they researched they found bacteria that were dental bacteria bacteria that you would find in the mouth so as that infection spreads from once you have an opening from the of 
that allows the outside environment, bacteria, to get into your nerve, it's now connected to the rest of your body mm -hmm. and where disease can really spread. And now they're finding more that dental disease, gum disease is linked to um, preterm birth, heart disease, um, and the like. So it's, it's very important to take care of your teeth. Right. Um, because once it goes, because it's kind of like not just the nerve, right? Because it can go into your bloodstream. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the, so, the, so we have sugar, starches, um, acidic drinks, mm -hmm. soda, anything that's carbonated is acidic. Car mm -hmm. Carbonic acid is acidic. And um, it breaks down your teeth even more. So your teeth is eroding on mm -hmm. top of, you know, you're drowning it in sugars and starches. Um, and the other, uh, so this is, these are the things I go through with uh, all my patients. Like, what's your diet like? What's your, uh, are you on any medications? Are you drinking something um, regularly instead of just normal water? And, uh, and it's usually one of those things. Um, acid reflux is a contributor, but medications is a significant contributor. So I can Why is that? So I can tell you, I have an array of patients who've probably gone years or decades mm -hmm. without... Um, having had a cavity. They start on like a high blood pressure medication and suddenly it's like one of the, the side effects is dry mouth. And saliva actually acts as a buffer to kind of like buffer all the acidity that's in your mouth, keeping your mouth, you know, um, at a, a normal pH level. When you lose that, I'm telling you, the, the, the cavity risk goes up exponentially, mm -hmm. okay? Because of all the acidic nature of all these different kinds of, you know, food, food that, that comes in con yeah. contact. Yes, that's right. That's right. So if you talk about, um, I, when I knew I was going to do this podcast with you, I, I looked up a lot about how, you know, going plant-based and how it relates to your oral health. Mm -hmm. And there's, it's funny, there's, there's actually a lot of mixed reviews out there. Mm -hmm. And there's really been no long-term study per se or, or multiple long-term studies so the the, the reviews are still, still mixed but the way i see it is is there's definitely more benefits mm -hmm. um but you have to do it the right way just just like they say like you know when they talk about vegetarianism or veganism in general it's like it's not the omission of meat right like it's you can't you can't just not eat meat and think that that's healthy right you can't not eat meat and then just eat nothing but breads and 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 sugar and substitute it with something else kind of right. like the trends back in the day where you know high fat and low fat and no sugar you know yeah. because because the food industry is very interesting and very um very skilled in terms of replacing and substitute one for another so it's a very marketing it's a marketing scheme where it's like you know uh natural is a marketing you know word or you know zero sugar when artificial sweetener is not considered sugar you know and there's a lot of things to kind of substitute one for the other yeah so there's you have to kind of be aware uh, if you choose to go on this journey that it's the idea is increasing your it's not what did you say it was um increasing your nutrients mm -hmm. um, in nutrient density versus calorie that's right. density that's right that's right and if you don't eat meat, but you eat nothing but pizza. That, that's just not that's just not going to work, right? So I think the um, there is some research that says like, you know, well, there's a concern that people who are vegetarian tend to eat more carbs and starches, um, and as a result, their their cavity risk goes up. Mm -hmm. But just like you know, like I said, going on this journey, you have to do it the right way. If you're eating the right foods, your body will get the right nutrients. And there's a lot of uh, indirect um, positive outcomes, like. If you can reduce your risk of high blood pressure, diabetes, you're off medications. That right. alone cuts your risk of getting cavities, mm -hmm. right? You're cutting out all the refined sugars. You're cutting out uh, carbonated drinks. Mm -hmm. That will reduce your risk in, uh, uh, of getting cavities. Mm -hmm. you know? And there was research that has shown that going plant-based you know, helps with uh, gum disease. There's less inflammation, right? Overall, there's less inflammation in your body when you go mm -hmm. plant-based. So now yes. you have less inflammation yes. in your gums, less gum disease, you're less likely to lose your teeth as a mm -hmm. result. Mm -hmm. you know? So um, that's what I've been relaying to uh, a lot of my patients. A diet plays a role, mm -hmm. uh, oral hygiene plays a significant role. So one of the questions that I wanted to ask was, you know, what was it like in dental school? Like, what did you receive? What did you not receive in terms of what you're finding out now? Like. Do they care about, you know, because it may seem obvious for someone that's non-dental because you're the expert of oral health, right? So 
you know, in my perception, you know, not being dental, you know, I would think there would be a huge emphasis on diet, right? And so, you know, take, because I know in my medical training, I didn't get that much in schooling. So what was it like in dental school, you know, that you're now realizing, did you have more or less of? in terms of, you know, the knowledge you have now? Um, I think that, you know, they, they, we were taught the, what I discussed, um, the basics of what contributes to high cavity risk. Um, but they didn't go too much into nutrition and how that affects your overall health, including your mouth, mm -hmm. you know? Because um, that was just wasn't our focus. We were, we were looking at such direct correlations you know, carbohydrates uh, leading to decay due to, you know, uh, bacteria. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, since I'm on this journey with you, I think that uh, I've become much more aware and a better clinician as a result, I think. <laughs> Take a more holistic approach to just fighting cavities uh, directly, but right. uh, attacking it from the source. Right. Because it's interesting when you talk about, you know, you're, you're saying all these different types of acids or acidic natures, and you're talking about carbs and different sugars. It's funny how, you know, none of this, you know, in a way is naturally appearing in nature, you know, like man had to kind of manipulate it to create, you know, the cane syrup and the high fructose corn syrup. And, you know, all these different types of sugars that are in everything. It's, you know, in our uh, dairy products, it's in our salad dressings, it's in our, it's Cereal, almost in everything. Yeah. It's, it's, you, can't, you can't escape it. And being a mother, does it make you more mindful, you know, when you're reading these in nutrition labels and when you're, you know, giving it to your children? Does it cause any difference in terms of how, what you're giving to your children? Oh, absolutely. I mean, like, I'm much more aware now, like I said, um, but I'm more aware of how it's harder to escape it, mm -hmm. right? Because even with kids, things taste so good. The, the things that are so bad for you taste so good, yeah. you know? Um, my daughter is a picky eater, but she can spot a lollipop like five aisles down. <laughs> you know? it, it, it's like you're just... Wired. You, you're addicted. Because it's, you know, I mean, we're, our bodies crave sugar, right? But not this much sugar. Not so much that no. it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, there's an overabundance and it's, it's taking a toll on our oral health and our overall health, yeah, I yeah. believe. And I did a lecture series with my medical school alma mater with, you know, food addiction and how even though it's not a actual, uh, you know, real diagnosis, but, you know, it is real. They've found a lot of, you know, research in terms of the same parts of brain uh, that substance abuse, you know, addicts would go through, that, you know, alcoholics and things like that hitting the same, you know, uh, dopamine receptors and the different parts of our brain. And um, food addiction, you know, for us, you know, as, you know, health champions and for you, the gateways, you know, for that, it's, it's, it's ubiquitous, it's everywhere. And it's funny how we can't escape it, like you said. Yeah. So um, give us a little bit more in terms of, you know, the one-on-one, -on -one. you know, what are we, you know, supposed to be looking out for, um, you know, in terms of brushing and flossing, how many times a day, you know, just even though, you know, it may seem simple, um, mm -hmm. it may seem like, you know, common sense, but I'm sure there's a lot of underlying deeper of the whys. And I, the best way for people like patients when I teach, you know, for them to understand is teaching them the why behind it yeah. instead of yes. finger pointing. I agree. So a lot of new patients that I meet, I tell them uh, the for, at the first exam is, um, I'm gonna tell you a lot of things about dentistry uh, that you may not know because I think dentistry sometimes goes under explained. Um, and I'm obviously an over explainer. <laughs> no, so, that's good. So I always, good. I always apologize in the beginning, like this will be your longest appointment where I will be talking <laughs> your ear off the entire time. But um, what I usually tell my patients is when we were children, did we, were we ever explained like, why do I need to see the dentist every six months and my physician once a year? Did you ever ask why? As children? Yeah, I, I always, I was like, okay, I guess that's just what you're supposed to do, right? Mm -hmm. um, the dental checkup is very important, not just for, you know, it would be nice uh, if you're going to get cavities to say you'll never get a cavity is impossible, but the best cavity is 
the smallest cavity because if you catch it small enough, you can actually take uh, like a fluoride toothpaste. Um, we'll get you like a fluoride varnish to kind of help reverse it if you catch it really, really early. And if, it, if it's um, a full-fledged uh, cavity, we can the best filling is the smallest one because we would just treat it with a small filling. It's when cavities get larger that it becomes a little bit more dangerous. Now you're closer to the nerve. Now you may need a root canal. A root canal is basically a, essentially a word for a deeper filling. You've got to go deep into the nerve canal to clean out all of that. And it's just mm. things get a little bit more complex and the risk of losing that tooth goes up. Um, so preventative dentistry is the best dentistry. Now, even with the, with the cleaning that you get, sometimes people think of it as like, a cleaning just sounds very like you're going to the spa for a facial, okay? <laughs> uh, but that's uh, but that's not the case. Um, the uh, the cleaning is actually very therapeutic. Uh, you can brush, obviously brush when uh, when you're home, but everything sometimes you're brushing you're getting is above the gum line. It's all the plaque. Um, and plaque is just another word for like leftover food mixed with bacteria that builds up and it gets stuck underneath your gums. And is that the same thing as tartar? Tartar is when that plaque becomes calcified. Mm -hmm. um, and that's much harder. You can scrub to the cows come home, it's not coming off. And as it stays and it sticks on your teeth, that's how it progresses to gum disease. Mm -hmm. And gum disease um, is uh, how most people end up in dentures. Your, your gums and your bone recede away from this site of uh, infection, uh, making your teeth e eventually become loose like a fence post, a pe think of a fence post that's not well planted in the, in the ground. Mm -hmm. It becomes wobbly and eventually it calls, falls right out. Uh, when you get a cleaning, you're almost getting flushed from the bottom up, reset back to zero, so that, and then you maintain for six months. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's very important to not skip that. And here's the scary thing that most people don't understand, and it's the number one question I get asked. It's like, why don't I feel anything? Mm -hmm. I don't feel any pain. Right, so why would I even why come I for that six month visit, exactly. you know, if I can't feel anything? And to that, I always tell my patients, like, does high blood pressure always tell you you're about to have a heart attack? It doesn't, right? It's, your body has a natural way of, like, blocking certain things because it... Compensating, like our internal, yes, like, yes. compensations. Yes. And my theory is, is, I think that in the mouth especially, if you had any pain, it would deter you from eating which is deters you from like survival. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of like, um, sometimes you might feel a little discomfort here and there, but for the most part, uh, people don't feel that they're, they're, they might see that their gums are receding. They don't feel any discomfort until it gets very, very bad. And at that point, sometimes it's a point of no return, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? Over, so what you're saying is that you can't overemphasize coming in every six months. Yeah. Why that duration though? Is it because like, you know, is that enough time whether you do something or not do something that you will be able to visibly see? I think that's just a time that the ADA, uh, the American Dental Association has just kind of been for years has pinpointed like, okay, this is um, an adequate amount of time because cavities, once it starts, it can rapidly spread quite quickly. Mm -hmm. So you can't really go a whole year without seeing your dentist mm -hmm. and having that cavity become, start as small and now it's, it's now a full-blown uh, root canal or extraction, right. you know? So but, what happens like when that tooth actually comes out? Like what ends up, you know, it's kind of like a, 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 ch a link to the entire bike chain, right? right? And they all work together. If you have that tooth out, you know, what, why is that a bad thing? Oh, so. Or if it is. It is, it is. So most people think that the easy way out is to just pull the tooth. Right, right. and then continue oh. on their behavior habits. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, uh, and in dentistry, before dentistry was even dentistry, that's what people did, right? Is you have a tooth pain, you just pull the tooth, problem solved. And that's, that's valid. It is a, a way of treatment of in, a dental infection. But there are like long-term uh, repercussions that you don't see right away. You, you take a tooth out, you should always replace it with something. I recommend an implant, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but the malocclusion leads to a lot of things. Teeth are not... Uh, glued to the bone. They're not like an extension of your skeleton like, like your fingers and toes are. They are a, a separate entity. And um, when you lose your teeth, they shift. Mm -hmm. And they don't shift in like, like a way you want them to shift. They lean, they waddle, you know. And it's like the fence post. I like that v visual of the fence that's post. Right. That's post. right. That, they, and so now you have an area where, because your tooth is not straight, it's leaned, you now have an area where food is more likely to get impacted, uh -huh. which then it becomes almost like a domino effect. You know, so um, 
see your dentist every six months. <laughs> um, it's so important. So we got, you know, twice a year you would come, you know. Um, so tell me, I've always wondered about this. You know, you, most dentists would recommend brushing twice a day, right? So why is it, I, I can understand it, you know, you go through a whole day, you're eating, you're drinking, you know, all kinds of stuff and you're brushing around, you know, brushing away all those different things, washing, things like that. But when you wake up in the morning, why do you brush in the morning? Because you're sleeping, right? Like what happens during the sleeping period that you have to brush in the morning? Well, first of all, your mouth stinks. <laughs> and secondly, your mouth is ever never fully sterile, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so even overnight, bacteria is working. So even if you brush, there are still things probably stuck to your teeth that um, the bacteria is making its home around mm -hmm. your teeth. So, I mean, I brush three times a day. So <laughs> twice is, is the minimum because we don't want to push it and it's not realistic, I guess, for some patients. But uh, you keep the plaque off your teeth. Um, you keep the bacteria away. And that's just... Is there such thing as overbrushing? I don't think so. I mean, you can brush too aggressively where it can cause a uh, gum recession, but, you know, generally my best brushers are the ones that keep their teeth the longest, okay. you know? Uh, hygiene is, is uh, definitely one of the major factors to keeping your oral health in, in check. And you would also recommend flossing as being, you know, equally as important um, as well? For sure. If you brush and you don't floss, it's like, let's just wash two sides of your car. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you know, like it's like once you start flossing, you're like, oh, eh, there's that turkey. <laughs> <laughs> right, because it will eventually, you know, become. It could also become that plaque and tartar, but just in between, you know, the, the crevices, right, the yes. in between space, yeah. right. Food will always. Um, it's possible that if we never ate, if we didn't eat, we probably would never have like issues like gum disease or cavities. Uh, don't quote me on that, but. Food is always the culprit, right? Mm -hmm. And we have to eat, unfortunately. But right. food is also what feeds the bacteria that's in our mouth, and they thrive on that, you know? Right. And you top it off with, like, you know, like I was saying, uh, acidic drinks, more sugar. It's like an all-you-can-eat buffet in Colin's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it, you, have, you have a good point because, like, you know, comparatively to that we know that are harmful to our health, like smoking and alcohol, you know, we, we can survive you know, without it, right? But we can't survive without food, but it's the quality of food. And, you know, I would also argue how, you know, frequent as, as well. Um, so, you know, relating it back, you know, how do you see, you know, plant-based uh, kind of shifting things? Like how, you know, do you see it being, you know, you're eating less acidic foods, you know, over, you know, over uh, like less processed and refined, less candy, less junk food, that can be more inflammatory and acidic towards the mouth, you would say? I'm already seeing a significant change um, just comparing uh, how we grew up. Because I remember, I mean, everybody, we all ate candy, you know, when we were younger. And now the younger patients that I'm seeing, you know, their parents are more aware. Their parents are more like educated. They're like, you know, I ate a lot of candy growing up. I got a ton of cavities. That's not going to happen to my kid. Um, we don't let, we don't have any candy in the house. Um, and so I'm already seeing the change that, that people are getting more educated. That you just need to put that information out there, mm -hmm. you know, um, not just for your oral health, but this plant-based diet. What I like about it is it's, it's making people do a little bit more research as to how food is made, right? Instead of just taking it off the shelf and being like, oh, this is good, you know, just thinking about like what process, press, process, Processes. Processes. <laughs> Process. Pro Process. Process. Sorry, that's a new one. <laughs> what processes did it have to go through to kind of get on the shelf to sit here for weeks and weeks, you know, right. and then have you put it in your mouth? Yeah, exactly. Well, going back to the whole vegan thing, like you can, you can totally be unhealthy even as a vegan. You know, you can eat a Twinkie all day long. Right, you know, right. you know, three meals a day, three sixty-five, and you know that that thing could probably outlast a nuclear war. Right. You know, <laughs> so. So, and um, you know, and, and so it's it's about the quality of food, and like we mentioned early in the podcast, you know, it's you know as close to mother nature as possible, you know. And what's beautiful about you know your ex personal experience was that you know you get to be in the kitchen more, you know, you yeah. get to prepare more because, like we talked about with the food industry, 
you know, they don't have regard, you know, for, you know, how it influences our health. Right. You know, we have to be the champions of our own health, yeah. be the champions for our oral health, you know. Um, what would you see different in terms of how you would educate, you know, you know, pa uh, patients? Do you think like a format like this would help? Do you think that more time in the office counseling them would help? Like, how would you see things uh, change if you see, like, for example, your colleagues being, you know, more on board with this? So I think a lot of people are on board. They just don't have access to this information, right? Um, I don't, whenever I talk about uh, being plant-based or even with my patients when I talk about, um, you know, maybe you shouldn't drink seltzer water every day because it's, it's, it's making your teeth extremely sensitive because of all the acidity that's in there. They get it, you know, nobody wants to, uh, you know, we're totally committed to making a change if we know it's good for us. And that sucks because I just bought a soda stream. <laughs> and I love seltzer yeah. water, so. <laughs> and, uh, and so that's, that's what it is. Um, people just don't have access to the knowledge. Um, but hopefully you and I will change that together. Yeah. So that's why we have a format and having, you know, good people in the room to kind of talk about in an open format. So, so um, I really appreciate you coming here. Um, I think this is a nice segue to conclude. And I love asking my audience uh, or my guests, you know, this question is what personally makes you thrive? You know, the podcast is called Thrive Bites. Um, you know, um, and I just love hearing about what drives the individual, you know what I'm saying? And I know you, I've known you for a very long time and I know that, you know, you're super motivated, but like, what has, what has pushed you to get to this point? You know, like what has inspired you? What's motivated you? Um, that's a... It's like a Miss America question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do do your what's your Miss America wave? Do you do your Miss America wave? What motivate? What, like what gets me up in the morning? Yeah. Uh, my family at six a.m. every day. You know, I, I would say first and foremost my family, right? Because you know, when, when you have kids, once you have kids, it, it things change. Your your motivations for things uh, change as well. I feel like you. They, I mean, people say this all the time, you want to be a better person, but it's true. You know, I, I, I read a lot of like uh, parenting books and it says, it, it speaks a lot about, it's like kids will probably not listen to what you say, but they're more likely to do what you do, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and so I'm very motivated by, you know, being that example. You know, I, I, you, want, you want your kids to grow up to be strong, independent, hardworking, assertive, um, but also carry very... Uh, strong values with them mm -hmm. and you can't teach that you mm -hmm. got to show them that so that's definitely uh, a huge Motivation factor for me to get get me up in the morning to and pass on those values that you want to convey to the next yeah, generation That's right. right. That's right. Um, I believe in hard work. I, I think hard work is is um, You know put your head down work hard. Don't complain. Don't you know um, do what needs to get done mm -hmm. and I uh, you'll get where you, you need to get. Um, I think the other uh, motivation is, is we're only in this world for a very short time, you know. Uh, you wanna leave the world doing some good mm -hmm. because if you don't, um, I, I, I don't know, I, maybe it's like that for everybody. I, it's definitely like that for me. It it's, feels more fulfilling. You wanna leave an impact? Not on a, national or global scale like you no 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 i <laughs> mean like one maybe, we're not talking about like open level <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um but i think from like from an individual to individual right exactly uh, standpoint like if i can uh, and in dentistry because you love dentistry right we've been talking about yeah. half of this episode was you know about you know dentistry it's like you know what kind of impact you know, maybe on a personal individual level for your patients, you know, like what kind of impression do you want to, you know, leave? You know, dentistry is, has been really rewarding for me um, because, you know, you've probably always had great teeth, but there are people who have gone through a lot in their lives, you know, abusive marriages or um, drug use that really wreak havoc on their teeth. Um, and it hurts them because, you know, the, the teeth and the, your teeth and your hair frame, you know, your, your first impression for the most part. And um, 
when you don't have nice teeth or any teeth, it, it can be very debilitating. It, it cuts your chance of getting a good job, um, meeting, meeting someone you love. So when you change that for someone, oh, those are like the best moments is when they just like cry <laughs> in your chair and <laughs> hug you. Um, and uh, that, that's when it's worth it. You know, that's when it's worth it. You know, there, there, was, there, was, there was a time when I debated whether I should be a stay-at-home mom, but it's, it's you know, this is also a passion of mine too. You know, mm -hmm. like, like being a mother is obviously the most rewarding thing I've ever done, but um, being Dennis feels like you, you're, you're doing a lot for someone um, or that particular individual. I had a patient once that was, you know, she, she had just, you know, she didn't have a great smile, you know, um, and she, when we fixed her up, she came in, it was night and day. She came in, her hair was done, she was wearing makeup, um, she was dressed up, and she was like, she was like, Dr. Connie, I got promoted at work, I uh, found a boyfriend, mm -hmm. you know, um, and she said, she was, I think she was working at the drive through at Wendy's, <laughs> and she, she said like people had driven by and remembered her, mm -hmm. uh, and obviously they recognized her. her that her kind team. of impression, right? Yeah, and they were like, whoa, you did something to your smile, you know? <laughs> and, and so, you know, that's, th those are the moments you live for, you know? Yeah. Um, those like, it, it's interesting because when you think of dentistry, you don't think about those indirect effects. Right, right, right. Um, Cause you're just fixing, you know, you pr bring me a problem, I'm gonna fix it for you. But yes, it, it trickles, you know, down yeah. to uh, your, your lifestyle and um, your quality of life as well. Awesome, yeah. awesome. So, you know, I, again, I want to reiterate how much I really appreciate, you know, you being here, or actually me being here because I'm in your house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, we're filming on location, but, you know, it's been really, really nice. Um, yeah, this you know, is fun. Here, this is fun. You know, and I hope the listening audiences will get, you know, not just a basic dentistry 101 and why it's important to kind of, you know, overemphasize some things and, you know, those self-care tips and things like that, but also related back to, you know, why plant-based has changed your personal experience and why we, you know, emphasize on the podcast, you know, it's important um, and why we feel like, you know, try it out, experiment it. And I tell my patients, you know, it's very simple, you know, like I don't believe in diets, but I just tell them to eat more plants because I think everyone can afford to eat more plants in their life. And, you know, you know, us personally, I really appreciate our friendship and I appreciate, you know, um, the communication, the relationship that we've built over time. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably one of my most valuable relationships, you know, you're, one of the strongest friendships that I have. And this was, this was lovely. This was really nice. And it felt very like, you know, easy. Like there was, <laughs> like we were, this is like how we talk all the time. Yeah, exactly. So um, guys, this has been another episode of Fry Bites. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. And if you enjoy this, please like, subscribe, and follow. And if you feel like this is a benefit for someone else, please share it. And uh, from all of us here, uh, thank you again to Dr. Connie Nguyen. Uh, my good friend, and uh, we will see you on the next one. Take care, everyone.